Hello everyone, and today we'll be painting Glutos Os Or Skol Os Oskolion, yeah, Lord of Gluttony. <laughs> and we will be assembling him up to the point where it gets in the way of painting, which, with all the ways he's made and stuff, you're just going to have to do full assembly. Only the staff can be separate, really. It's just that trying to reassemble it after the fact, after painting, is just going to damage the paint job, and it's not too bad to deal with. However, there's a huge gap on his left shoulder pad that just has to be filled in. So we will be taking green stuff and with a pair of like tweezers to squeeze it because the amount of green stuff we need is very small. So we'll be using tweezers to help uh, make them squeezing and repeatedly folding over. After that happens, we'll be applying this, uh, the green stuff all over the gaps in the shoulders. Once it dries a bit, we will then take in a, a filing tool and we will file it down to size and uh, also using water and just the file and just to create a smooth transition so no problem there so it looks fine and simple and once that's done we're going to prep it for priming we are going to be using a bright touch gray car primer very strong and now with Cadian flesh tone carrion burden crimson and kisla flesh we're going to paint the flesh we're going to start off with a layer of kisla flesh i mean a Acadian flesh tone all over the skin now the reason why we're starting with the skin is because it's the largest piece as well as we're going to apply uh, dry brushing techniques and so might as well do this now when everything else is not painted so we don't have to repaint anything afterwards. And once that's done we will apply Karienberg Crimson all over the skin to add the depth and the purpleness to it. I then dry brush Cadian Flesh Tone all over the model. I then decide it needs a bit more depth, so I take Lamian Medium, and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to mix it one to one with the Carrienburg Crimson, and I'm going to apply it all over the model again. There's a little bit of water in it as well. Once it dries, I will take a smaller dry brush, and I will dry brush Cadian Flesh Tone all over it again, a light dry brushing this time. I'll then take pure Cadian Flesh Tone, water down a bit, and then I will apply it in straight lines uh, to, uh, at, how is it, to make bold the open parts of the flesh, to straighten some things out, to get rid of any of the dustiness that could have occurred from dry brushing. Yeah, to focus on the highlights, the raised areas and the folds of the skin. I then take Kisla Flesh watered down and apply it to the most raised areas, the biggest folds of skin, and the edges of pieces of his limbs and stuff, as well as his fingers and knuckles. And now with the best camera angles we can get, Gene Stealer Purple, Magos Purple, Damonette Hide, and Pallid Witch Flesh, we're going to paint his pants. We're going to start off with a layer of Gene Stealer Purple all over his pants. And then with Magos Purple, we're going to apply a solid layer of it all over his pants. And once that's done, we're going to go back to Jean Sealer Purple and we're going to overbrush slash dry brush all over his pants, wanting to pick out pretty much like 90% of the pants except for the deepest, darkest recesses. I then do a one to one mix of Jean Sealer Purple and uh, Damonette Hide, and then I overbrush slash dry brush onto the pants again, doing probably about 80 to 85% of the pants.
I then do two parts Damon Hyde and one part Jean Sealer Purple and I overbrush slash dry brush onto the pants again, covering around uh, 60 to 70 percent of it. We want to basically build up some highlighted layers there. I then overbrush slash dry brush pure Damonette hide onto the most raised areas and upper areas. Like we're covering like 50% of the pants now. Now doing this, all this dry brushing has led some places looking kind of dusty, not very strong in colors. So then we're going to take some watered down Damonette hide and we're going to apply straight lines on the biggest folds and most raised areas. We're going to draw straight lines through the wide areas because like folds so you can envision folds there. And then I'm going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Damonette Hide and a Pallid Witch Flesh with some water mixed in and I'm going to apply it on, how do you say it, this is a bit artistic, on the most raised areas, just like tiny little slivers on parts of the pants to highlight them, to make them stand out. And now with Xerxes purple, Nolan Oil and Jean Sealer purple, we're going to paint the front cloth thingy that it has in the front. We're going to start with a layer of Xerxes purple, and then once that dries we'll apply Nolan Oil onto it. Once that is finished, we will then apply pure Xerxes purple on the most raised areas, edges, and the giant flat part. And once that's done, we will take watered down pure Jean Sealer purple, mix with a little bit of Xerxes purple to make sure it's too not too striking and just draw thin lines on the most raised areas and most prominent places. All right, with Xerxes purple and Nuln oil, we're going to paint his largest tentacle. Now in the art book, it, or in the pictures, it looks like it gets pretty dark up there, so what we're going to do is going to start off with a base layer of Xerxes purple, and then we're going to apply Nuln oil onto it. And once that is done, we're going to dry brush uh, the Xerxes purple onto it. But that's not enough, so I mix in a bit of Jean Sealer purple and do another dry brushing to highlight it, focusing more on... So the closer it is to the main body, the pinker it is, so I apply a bit more Xerxes purple there, or Jean Sealer purple to lighten it up. And now with Carrienburg Crimson and Lamian Medium and uh, Cadian Flesh Tone, I don't show it here because I added it in later, we're going to uh, do the transition of his flesh to purple. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply Lamian Medium onto the part of the tentacle that's still uh, flesh colored. We will then apply Carrienburg Crimson after we apply the Lamian Medium. And what that's going to do is going to fill in the Lamian Medium. We can like sort of like push and pull the color so it looks like one side will have uh, will be darker purple and the other side will be like a transitioning color and you apply more Carrying Bird Crimson or more Lamian Medium as needed and try to pull the Carrying Bird Crimson into one spot and slowly drag it out. And once that is done and dried, I then took Cadian Flesh Tone and I did an overbrushing slash dry brushing to sort of help with the transition. I even did a little bit of the overbrush and transition on the first purple tentacle to make it look better. And then I went back again with more Lamian Medium over both the pink, tent pink part of the tentacle and the darker part of the tentacle and I just add carrying bird crimson in there to try to blend them better together so the dark purple and the pink will look like it's transitioning into that tentacle. And now with Dark Reaper and Nuln Oil we're gonna paint the I, I don't know like spandex thing he's wearing and so a Dark Reaper we're gonna apply it all over this stuff it reaches on to his fingers and around his sides and such. 
And then once that's done, we're gonna take known oil and apply it all over. Now we did that straight from the bottle and for some reason it's kind of like, it concentrates in some areas and it's weak in other areas. So I'm gonna take some Lamine Medium and I'm going to do another coat of known oil. But this time I'm going to do a one-to-one -one mix of known oil and Lamine Medium and that seems to have the known oil disperse more evenly. And then I coat it a second time and it looks better. I then use the Dark Reaper in a very fine brush and then I paint all the folds, the lines, and I fill in some of the large open gaps that where light would be hitting it. With Gene Sealer Purple and Lamy Medium, we're going to paint the transition again of this smaller tentacle, the one that's holding the uh, cup. We're painting that tentacle Xerxes Purple, so the end holding the cup is the darkest. And then what we're going to do is a mix of Gene Sealer Purple with some water and some Lamy Medium mixed in. And then we're just going to tap, tap, tap it repeatedly on the transition, the very bold transition between Xerxes Purple and the Cadian Flesh Tone and stuff. And we will do a few coats of this. You let it dry. It's, you can't really dry it with a hair dryer. It kind of ruins it. And so slowly, eventually, it'll do this nice transition where you see the color going from the pinky flesh to the gene stealer purple and then to the dark Xerxes purple. Now with contrast Magos purple, we're going to use this to add some more contrast. We're going to take this in a fine brush and apply it into like the deeper, darker folds and recesses of his skin to make the rest pop more. And now with Dawnstone and Drakenhof Nightshade, I paint his eyes and tongue, and I kind of screw up. So a base layer of Dawnstone on the tongue and the eyes, I accidentally paint a little too much. I'm supposed to just paint like his eyelids, instead I painted the surrounding area. And so I did layers of Drakenhof Nightshade on the tongue and the eyes, and then I went back with Dawnstone and highlighted, and then more Drakenhof Nightshade watered down a bit. And I repeated this process until I was satisfied, but I applied too much Dawnstone at first and like covered too much his eyes will appear too big and because his face has so much details and complex coloring with uh, all the flesh tones before I couldn't really fix it so I just went with it I decide the skin needs more work, so I take Kisla Flesh and Lamian Medium, and I can't tell you the exact proportion, but I got a little bit of Kisla Flesh, and then I dropped a full drop from a dripper onto the Kisla Flesh. And so it, the Kisla Flesh is heavily diluted, so it's a bit translucent, and so I painted directly on the most raised areas, the folds, and some large open patches of flesh that are towards the upper part of his body, and such. And because Lamian Medium, uh, sort of dilutes it, smooths it out. The paint comes out very, very smooth. You can see the underside. It really uh, brightens the model without being too sharp. The Lumium Medium really helps. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to apply this on everything we have painted so far. And once that is done, we will take a Liquitex Gloss Varnish and we're going to apply this on all the latex. Don't forget his uh, tentacle that's up high also has uh, some of this latex stuff.
and then with the finest of camera angles, Iron Hands Metal, Druchi Violet, and Stormhost Silver, we're going to paint the uh, silver pieces of metal that he has. Now what I'm going to do is, with the Iron Hands, uh, this is basically a back and forth on his shoulder pad, uh, where we apply Iron Hands, and apply some Druchi Violet, then apply some Iron Hands, apply some more Druchi Violet, so that it like shows a little bit of transition. And as well as the Iron Hands, we're going to apply it on a lot of pieces. He has jewelry on his right arm, his necklace, uh, beads and stuff, uh, studs on all his latex things. There's a lot of that. So we'll be going back and forth and painting that. It takes a while. And his like ankles and parts of his clothing have these like, uh, places where the medallions will be. The backgrounds are metallic. So, I mean, like, there's a lot of small little details here and there you have to find. Also, also, all those metal clips he has. And so once you've done all that, and the Druchi Violet and all that stuff is done back and forth, you then just go with the final layer of Stormhost Silver on his shoulder pad and on the most raised pieces of silver that he's wearing and stuff, just to pick out the highlights and details. And now with Hoeth Blue, Dragonhoof Nightshade, and Bealtan Green, we're going to paint the face on his staff. Now, how this is going to work is we're going to start with a layer of Hoeth Blue, and then we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Dragonhoof and Bealtan Green, and I'm going to apply it all over, and I'm going to realize it's not that good. <laughs> and then I'm going to do consistent highlights of Hoeth Blue on all the raised and major areas and the, like, giant open plains. And then I will go back with uh, two parts Dragonhoof and one part Bealtan Green, and apply it and yeah, it's so-so and then I highlight again with Hoeth Blue and I repeat this process back and forth until eventually I just add a uh, final layer of Bealtan Green onto it I then take some Palette Witch Flesh and then after doing another highlight of Hoeth Blue I then do a one-to-one -one mix of Hoeth and Palette, and then I just apply it on the most raised areas and just prominent spots like that to add some contrast and brightness to it. And now with Brass Scorpion, Liberator Gold, and Stormhost Silver, we're going to be painting the gold pieces on him. And so we're going to start with Brass Scorpion on his shoulder pad and all the gold places. Now there was so much, so it would take me like 10 or 20 minutes of camera footage because I had to decide where it actually was, but he has some bracelets on his arm, uh, the gold cup he carries has like some gold circlets, the, uh, his feet, his ankles have some gold pieces there uh, embedded into his clothing as well as his loincloth in the front and the gold coin thingies that are on his chest and such so it's like it, it was more of a treasure hunt to find it so good luck And then with Liberator Gold, we pretty much covered 90 to 95 percent of all the Brass Scorpion as well as the majority of the pieces of coin. Now, the Brass Scorpion actually is kind of see-through. You won't notice it if you just place the Liberator Gold on, but it adds like a strong background and makes Liberator Gold stand out more. Without it, it the Liberator Gold it looks pretty pale. So, And don't forget the staff as well. Everything apart from the shaft that he holds is with Liberator Gold. And once that is done, we're going to take Stormhost Silver and we're going to apply it to the edges of his shoulder pad, the uppermost edges, um, the folds, uh, like, how do I put it, bottom moon circlet of each of the coins. Uh, just put a dot on the upper raised areas of the coins if you can't paint that well on it, and such and such. <laughs> And 
And now we're going to paint some knickknacks he's carrying with Dysandry Dust, Agrax Earthshade, Gullum and Flesh, and Skeleton Horde Contrast. We're going to paint these random things he has. With Xandry Dust, we're going to paint the handkerchief he's holding with his tentacle, the skull bowl he's holding on his lap, and his satchel that he has next to the skull bowl. And so then what we're going to do is with Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to paint the skull. With the Gullum and Flesh, we're going to paint the handkerchief. And with the Agrax Earthshade, we'll have to do two coats of Agrax on the satchel. And that's it. We don't have to push these that far, they just have to look passable and then they'll fit in and blend in with the rest of the body. And then with Emperor's Children, we're going to paint the berries that are in the Skull Bowl. And now with Ulthwan Grey and Drakenhof Nightshade, we're going to paint these beads that are on his large tentacle. And surprisingly, they, they turn out pretty well. The Ulthwan Grey is very close to the box art. And so we're going to paint all the beads with these Ulthwan Grey, and then we're going to apply a thin water down, like one-to-one -one mix of water and Drakenhof Nightshade onto the beads. And that's it. And then with Cantor Blue and Hoeth Blue, we're going to paint all the gems he has. We're going to start with the base layer of Cantor Blue. He has one on his chest, one on his wrist, and he has a bunch of them on his tentacle. And eh, there's probably some others I'm forgetting. And once that's done, we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Cantor Blue and Hoeth Blue. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to cover for the oval-shaped gems. We're going to cover the top 75% of each circlet, or as best you can. As far as the completely round gems that aren't as uh, tentacles, we're basically going to cover the top 75% to half, as best you can. And then we're going to take pure Hoeth Blue, and we're just going to tap it on all the circle gems at the uppermost raised area, as well as we are going to apply it on the edges of each of these, uh, the medallion shaped ones. And once that is done, we're going to take uh, Liquitex Gloss Varnish again, and we're going to apply it on all of the gems we painted. And then with Blood for the Blood God, we're going to well, fill his goblet. And we are done! This guy took a bit more, mostly uh, he has a lot of unique and distinct detail, so he has the most character out of all the model different characters and stuff. So this character has the most character out of all the characters that come in this character kit. Yeah. And so, uh, there's a lot of random details here and there, I have to focus on a lot. The jewelry is sort of like a game of Where's Waldo, because you kind of have to figure out where everything is, and what is gold or silver and such and such, as well as... I mean, he's, he's just tedious. Uh, I would, would note that apparently he has hair on the back, which you would not know from any of the box art. I just painted like Sigvolds. Uh, just simply that. And, uh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's actually a bit more fun than the others. There's a lot more flavor to him. And so... And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm almost done with this model kit. Next, I'm coming up with the chariot, which will be done relatively soon. I hope I had a vacation this week, so. All right, so like the video if you like the video. Share if you want to share it. Comment if you want to comment or nitpick anything. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.